What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. And you guys know, man, I've been giving a lot of NFL draft commentary as of late. This is my third one that I've been doing. Maybe you haven't seen the other two yet. They haven't been done yet. But this is a trilogy that I've been doing based on what's been happening in the first round. Now, just to kind of go back, the NFL draft was supposed to be in Las Vegas, right? And, you know, that's also an, an inauguration because the Oakland Raiders are now the Las Vegas Raiders. So this is a new market the NFL is opening its doors to. And they thought that it would be a good idea to have the NFL draft there, which I'm pretty sure would have been off the hook having in Vegas. Unfortunately, coronavirus, shit is real, said, uh -uh. Y'all not having this shit down here. So we got to do this thing digitally, right? And so this was the first cyber NFL draft ever, right? There were, you know, usually the players are in the same place, same ballroom, they're getting drafted. And, you know, Roger Goodell is shaking the players' hands as they cross the stage and they give him the hat. But in this case, all the players that were expected to go in the first round, they were automatically, you know, notified that they may go in the first round. So they had some kind of camera set up in the home and you know, pretty much linked up to the NFL network servers. So you know, pretty much we can see what's going on inside their home. Now I wanna go toward the end of the first round where the Tennessee Titans selected Isaiah T. Wilson, all right? Now he is an offensive tackle. He's from the Brooklyn, New York area and he went to the University of Georgia. Now Georgia is not a powerhouse like you know, Ohio State or Clemson or Alabama, but they're like right beneath it, right? Georgia's good every year. You know, Georgia's definitely, uh, 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 it's like Oklahoma, you know, it's like, you know, they're a school that's top 10, you know, they, they, they do very well, they recruit very well. And he went there to play offensive tackle, right? Interestingly enough, now I don't know how this happens, but anybody knows that the University of Georgia, it's not like it's in Atlanta, it's in Athens, Georgia, all right? Now, <laughs> Athens, Georgia is uh, white, okay? Let's just be honest, it's a, it's a white town, all right? And my man, Isaiah T. Wilson, and one of the things that when talented black men uh, like Isaiah T. Wilson, when they go to a town, and it is somewhat black, but the University of Georgia is a white, it's a white, college. it's a pre predominantly white institution. So my guess is my man met this, uh, this chick in college, I could be wrong, but my guess that, you know, she's not probably a white chick from, you know, Brooklyn where he's from, all right? And when he gets drafted, and again, you know, I talked about this with the CD Lamb situation. When you're getting drafted in the cyber draft, a lot of people are checking their phones and stuff like that. And when he was getting drafted, the white girl came on and was sitting on his lap and whatever, right? But the mom removed her. Don't believe me? I want you to watch this video. We're gonna come back to it. Let's go ahead and play that clip. So you guys see how the mom bum rushed the, you know, the white girl and, and pretty much went to the son and did that, right? Now, it, it must be obvious that, you know, they probably don't like each other. But this is a real big thing. I think this has a lot to do with um, with race. And um, I want to give a shout out to a, a person that um, I, I used to do some podcasts with. There's a guy named Donovan Sharp. And he said one of the reasons that you know, in, in any community, white men, when their daughters date black guys are, um, are black women, when their sons date white women. The reason why they're upset is because it's a representation of how they failed as a parent. And Isaiah Wilson, who has a black mother, and, and like me, I have a black mother, I love my mother, right? And one of the reasons why I'm pro-black or, you know, have a lot of Pan-African elements is because my mother was a reason for me loving black people. My father was a reason for me loving black people, right? It's just, it was taught into me because they, they treated me nice. They treated me good. They treated me with love. 
So they treated me with the love that so much so that I want to stay with the people that loved me when I was growing up. You know, people at my church treated me nice. People in my community treated me with love. Right. When I was coming up, I've always experienced people loving me. That's one of the reasons why I, I, I ended up with my perspective. But let's talk about Isaiah Wilson. The question is, why did he end up with a white woman? All right. Why? I mean, because he's you know, tall, black, dark skin. How does that happen? Okay. Like I said, Athens, Georgia, where University of Georgia is at, has at least 28% black people in that city. Uh, Georgia has a lot of blacks in the state, you know, but he chose a white woman. And I'm going to give you a reason why. He probably chose her because there's a problem in something that he didn't like about his own mother. And that's something that we got to talk about, man. You know, a lot of chicks want to, like, you know, the black moms, even my mom will tell me, you know, if you bring a white woman home, I would be very disappointed. And a lot of black men hear that. But see, a lot of black men who date out, the first problem person they have a problem with is internal. Is, you know, my mom was mean to me, or my mom didn't, you know, respect me enough. She didn't really support what I was trying to do. You know, I looked like my dad, there was some abuse. You know, although I love her, she did some good things, but you know, th that's, that's what happened. And then when the boy goes out or the man goes out and he goes out and get a white girl, or he goes out and get an Asian girl, or he deals with a Hispanic girl, and he, he experiences, cause you know, your mama, she does love you, but that love might come from a different place. And when you get with another race of people, sometimes as a black man, you experience some nurturing that you may have never gotten. You may have experienced some attention to detail that you've never gotten, you know? And it's probably my experience just on like, you know, obviously non in non-sexual way that the white woman might be more attentive and caring and loving more so than the mother ever has been. And for a lot of mothers who see their black sons get into interracial relationships with white women, that tends to be a hard pill to swallow because my son went and got with a woman that doesn't look like me and I have a role in why he did it. And 90% of the time or 95% of the time, you know, if your child ends up with a non-black person, you play a role into why that is. Mike Tyson talked about that, you know? If the white woman is treating your son like that, and the thing about it is the way the black woman, and let me kind of go back to the white woman. If the white woman is, is, is being nurturing to him and loving him, then what's the problem? Or, Maybe Isaiah Wilson tried to deal with black women before and the white woman was coming with such a perspective towards him in a relationship that it was genuine. Now the way the black mother is looking at it is, is like, listen, you over here trying to share this moment with him, I'm the one that raised him, right? I'm the one that took care of him. I'm the one that made sure he went to college. I'm the one that paid for the football. You know what I'm saying? He's my son. So when the white girl is trying to take that moment away from the mother and the mom was like, you wasn't shooting with him at the gym. And I mean, I can respect that, right? Cause a mom is always going to look at, especially single moms. You know, when you're a single mom and you've raised a son or a child to do successful things and they do it. And then, you know, they get a spouse. The spouse is competing for the resources. So, you know, I can understand her doing that. My mom even tells me, you know, if you date some woman, you know, the number one question you should always ask her is, do she love your mother? You know, because I'm the one that made sure that you went to medical school. I'm the one that made sure you went to private school. And I'm the one that's going to be here for you no matter what. And I can understand that. And there's some validity to that because, you know, your mama is always going to be there as long as she living. You know, like I told you, my mama, she loved me so much, nigga. My mama lied for me straight up i'll be sitting right there in the house with her and you'll call and she'll tell you i'm not there but i'm right there you know what i'm saying so my mom is gonna always ride or die for me women come and go but in this case her pushing the white girl aside is really a bigger issue as to why is he dealing with this white girl in the first place he's dealing with the white girl most likely because of you and, 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 and it's probably this is the reason why he doesn't want to go ahead and build with a black woman. And a lot of sisters got to come to terms with that, man. A lot of times when these black men start dealing with other races, you call them, oh, you hate your mama, you hate yourself, you know, um, you got mommy issues. Yeah, they do. And guess who helps in that? You know, mom. And I want to say this, if you're a woman that has black sons, you know, love your son, you know, try to be supportive of your son. Don't abuse him, right? Because you can turn your son into a swirler or you can keep him in the race. A lot of times you can do that. And a lot of times, you know, when you, when black men get exposed to different cultures in different ways, if you're a dysfunctional parent, you know, quickly a brother, when he goes to the University of Georgia, he's around different people, around white classmates, around, you know, upper black classmates, he's going to be 
able to see like, oh damn, this is how it's supposed to be. So, you know, I just wanted to share that with you brothers. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe at the bell. This is another episode of the Celebrity Junk. It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Like I said, back at it again. Make sure you go to the first comment pinned to the top. Subscribe. And yes, this music that you're listening to today has been sponsored by my name, my brother, Aunt James of Staff Music. You know what I'm saying? Out there, hold me down. Shout out to brother Aunt James, man. Make sure you check him out. Staffmusic.com right there. And as you brothers know, the buffoonery remains at an all-time high. I'm out.